Hey, what's going on, you guys? I'd like to welcome you guys to another one take your review. It's your boy Big Dog back in the day. I got a review for Peacemaker. What the world need? What the world need? What the world need? Peacemaker. What the world need? What the world need? What the world need? Peacemaker. Hey, uh, episode seven, which I, bro, it is ridiculous how consistent this show is. I, I honestly thought after how high last week's episode was, we we're gonna take a little dip. Didn't happen at all we got some great character moments we got some good action and we got just like some overall just satisfying moments in general throughout this entire episode um uh, let me just start from the beginning just seeing what happened between peacemaker and his brother we see it like it technically wasn't his fault they all had doing some country redneck shit having the kids fight in the backyard and then when somebody actually ends up hurt i mean the fucking white dragon wants to blame uh uh Chris, I'm just like, dude, you got these kids in the backyard fucking fighting each other, bro. Somebody's eventually going to get hurt, and and, and and it's just like the person who got hurt just happened to be his favorite son, and he just didn't get hurt. He got fucking killed, so that obviously played a part in uh, a fact in like Peacemaker's life going forward because I think after that, he was just trying to make amends or he was doing any and everything his dad was telling him to do. And plus, he killed the one person in, uh, who seemed to actually genuinely care about him, which was his brother. So, like, that obviously bothered him. So, people make it like, you know what? I'm, I'm tired of this shit. Fuck it. Let's go get rid of these damn butterflies. And you know who right there, who ready for whatever. That's my dog, Vigil Vigilante. Gonna, he, my boy going go every single time. I fucking love Vigilante. And the, the economist actually comes with him this time. That just kind of, like, shows you how to do. Uh, we saw the uh, relationship between Vigilante, not Vigilante. Uh, peacemaking and economist was at the beginning of the season. The, the fact of the matter, I didn't even call him economist. Okay, I would call him the fucking die beard just like peacemaker. But like, yeah, he actually called him by his name now. So they, you know, they gone. You know, they about to go take on these these butterflies. It is what it is with them. And we have that. And I'm gonna get back to that uh, that that group of friends right there. That group, you know, I guess you could say group of friends in a minute. But we actually have one of my favorite scenes throughout the entire series. And that's the moment between Harcourt and uh, Adebayo. Adebayo packing that shit. She like, I'm, I'm tired of this. I can't do this no more. I'm ready. I'm about to go. And Harcourt shows up like, yo, you fucking planted that, bro. You 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 betrayed us. And she's just like, yeah, I I, I, I did. And like, she's like, I, I, I knew something was up with you the entire time. They also have like a little comedy moment. That was uh, stuffed in there. She was talking about, like, you're just like an asshole uh, or something like that. She's like, yo, I thought you was actually talking about, like, you know, something that's wrong with my body. She's like, why would I do that? She's like, you seem like the type of bitch who will try to, like, bring up shit or something like that. Something that's wrong with somebody during the argument. I'm like, man, she kind of got a point. But I felt like this argument was really good for a couple of different reasons. One, we get to see, like, Harcourt's point of view. Harcourt's just like, hey, if you're not with us, then it's kind of like, fuck it. And Adebayo's like, well, that's not how things work, okay? You, know, you you just ignore everybody else's feelings to, to, like, make yourself more comfortable. But, like, I don't have that luxury that you have, you know what I'm saying? So, no, nah, fuck that. And then she finds out, they're like, hey, yeah, I'm uh, Amanda Waller's daughter. I'm like, what? Like, so, truth bombs are getting dropped everywhere. But somebody who brought in a completely different energy is Myron. Myron comes in and it's just like, uh, yeah, I knew she was uh, his, her, her daughter. I, I mean, I would obviously run a background check on everybody that's working with us. I'm just like, well, I Myron, that Myron got a point. And, like, Myron actually understood. He's like, yeah, I mean, I just wish you would have planted the, the, the diary I mean, afterwards. You know what I'm saying? That would have been a better idea. Because I think the whole plan for Waller was, like, just in case things with the shit. Police pick up Peacemaker. They go to his like his trial, his home. They find everything. They're like, oh, okay, this is what this guy's been out here trying to do. So he takes the fall for it. He goes right back to Bell Reeve. Uh, Amanda Waller has him wiped right back again. You know what I'm saying? Doing shit for her with the Suicide Squad. So it's like, okay, I'm like, that's that's what was the purpose. And I think that so special skill set is out of bio's clueless and she's innocent. And they they just, I mean, that just. You just naturally let your guard down around people like that. You know what I'm saying? So I, I understood it. Now, back to my boy, uh, <laughs> the group, the, the 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 rock and roll brothers, because uh, as they say, man, there's no time, to, uh, there's no wrong time to rock. And they get attacked by the white dragon because the hell mishap track is in them, which is like understandable. You know what I'm saying? I don't think. I'm pretty sure they weren't thinking about that. 
considering the fact that they weren't thinking about the white dragon at all. Last time they checked, he was in jail, so it really didn't even matter to them. He wasn't on their radar, but he immediately got on their radar once he turned the damn truck on his side, opened a hole in that bitch, and tried to blow Peacemaker and Vigilante straight to fucking hell. So it's like, <laughs> it's like immediately turned over, but... As the great friend that he is, my boy Vigilante had that bit ready for him. I hear people talking about them switches. Chopper came automatic. My boy got the bus in there. I said, let's go, Vigilante. We ain't going to let him take down your boy. But Vigilante, as cold as, as cold as he is, he's also a goddamn idiot. Let's just put that out there, bro. My boy is my, my boy dumb as hell. <laughs> we see that because he proceeds to... Throw a bomb. Throw a bomb. And stand within the blast radius of said bomb. <laughs> and granted, uh, it, it it did its job. It, it, it stopped White Dragon for a little bit. And there was a uh, peacemaker and, and economist was able to escape. But it also did hella damage to Vigilante. I'm just like, bro, what the, the, what the hell is wrong with you? And I think that's kind of like a showing. Because like, we saw how... Mern, when he got hit by the ball, what happened to him? And then we saw with with Vigilante, like Vigilante wasn't even close as what Mern was when he first got hit. Vigilante actually feeling this, you know, what I'm saying? And, he, and, and then like the pain language throughout. Now there are a couple other different things, a couple of different plot lines. Judo Master's gone, and he's at the store beating up people. I don't know what was wrong with these people, just like randomly talking shit. I'm just like, okay. I don't know how many people would just randomly talk shit to somebody just because they're short and dressed up. Like, I get it. It's it's weird. But in the superhero, they, they live in like a superhero universe, bro. I, I don't know what this guy on. Then again, they probably could have thought, man, this is some old, some old kick-ass type shit. Bro. I, what is wrong with you, little mitt? Boy, he got on their ass. I'm talking about <laughs> instantly, bro. The front dude got bust, his head busted through the car door. I mean, car wonder. Other dude got <laughs> got throat chopped. I'm just like, damn. Like, they, they deserved it. They, they, they kind of deserved it. And then he just hopped in the car. I don't know how he knew where they was at, how he had to drop on them to know exactly where they was at. That that was the only part to me that was just like, okay. He know exactly where they were staying, and he pulls up on them. And, uh, well, this was later on in the episode after a few different other events that happened. Um, but, yeah, he pulled up on them. And, like, they get the squab and, and, like, but, like, Harcourt had a great fight with him. I mean, I wasn't expecting Harcourt to win. It would have been felt, it would have felt really out of place if Harcourt beat him. I understand she's, like, very, very skilled and, you know, then she's been fighting and doing stuff since she was a child. But, like, I seen, I seen Judo Master whoop the hell out of Peacemaker and Vigilance, and I know both of them boys throw them bitches. So, you feel me? That would have just kind of, like, felt out of place to me. But, yeah. Uh, once again, Judo Matter lets his guard down, and Adebayo gets the best of him again. Shocks the shit out of my boy. Ties him up. I don't know what they're going to do with Judo Matter. Judo Matter is probably going to be in the next Suicide Squad because I'm almost positive they're going to take his, his ass going to end up in Bell Reef with a damn chip in his damn neck. You feel me? But um, <laughs> one of the funniest parts in this episode was they realized that they're getting tracked by the helmet. And Peacemaker just so happens to put the helmet on a raccoon. But when you look at Peacemaker's face, he it, it just I'm like, damn, what the fuck happened? I'm like, oh, <laughs> this raccoon whooped his ass, <laughs> bro. That shit was so fucking funny to me, dog. Just like that. They just really know how to work the comedy beats in this show. Um, they end up getting away, obviously, uh, because my boy Vigilante stole a car. Uh, they end up finding him, and he just, like, laid out because, like, I told you, like, the damage from the bomb really bothered him. And then <laughs> they proceeded to get in the car with this dude, and he tried to turn the music up. He's like, there's no wrong time to rock. No, this is the wrong time. <laughs> like, Peacemaker's just like, I've had enough. Like, you tripping, bro. We, we are in a tough-ass situation. But we just keep jumping back uh, between both groups. And probably one of the best moments in this. Because one thing I like about the show, it's established that, like, shit's real. You know what I'm saying? The threat is real. The stakes are high. You know what I'm saying? And we, we, we get to see that put on full display. Because Mern's back in his room. He's getting this shit. He, they ready to leave because he know they got the drop on him. 
they show up. The cops, uh, Sophie, I think it's Sophie, no, Sophia, and all the rest of the cops, the other butterflies, golf technically, they show up and it's like, oh shit. Merns is like, okay, this is my last stand. You guys, get rid of the cow. Like, get rid of the cow. He knows he's not making it out. Now, he has a, he lets off a couple shots and so on and so forth, but for the most part, they bust in, grab him, and sh- and so and well, golf asks like, "Hey, how do you know about the cow?" He like, oh, "I ain't gonna tell ya. I went up, boom, boom, boom." I'm just like, "Damn!" Like, no monologue, no wasting time. I'm just like, "That's that's a different type of feeling." You know what I'm saying? Because it it, it really like showed the brutality of it. As much like we joke around in the show and, I'm, and like a lot of stuff, time stuff is like silly, but like si- silly yet serious. This was one time where it's like, okay, now nah, we cu- like they cut the bullshit. There was no comedy in in the mix. They just killed him, and then they said, like, you see the butterfly come out of mine, and he grabs it with uh, golf. Well, Sophia, Sophia golf, whichever one you want to call her, grabs it. It's like it could, it could doc, whatever, whatever his actual alien name is, should have just joined us and crushed him. And then the other butterfly was kind of looking like, oh, you killed him. Like, he was a warrior. What do you expect? What was the alternative? I'm just like, so they kind of possibly threw, like, a little wrench into the plans. Like, hey, man, we can't kill our own or something like that. Even though, I mean, technically, Murray has been out here slaughtering him too. You feel me? Well, now that I think about it, Murray technically never killed a butterfly himself. Because when they went to the plant, Myrn wasn't there. Myrn has technically never killed a butterfly himself. Now, yeah, now that I think about it. So, yeah, that's a, damn, that's crazy to think about. So, I guess maybe it's like really frowned upon them killing each other. But, yeah. And like, Harcourt and Adebayo come in and they see, like, they're crushed. Like, they're crushed. Like, that's the first time, like, Hark and uh, the, I can't think of the lady's name who uh, plays Harcourt, but, like, the way she was able to emote in, emote in this uh, scene was I thought was fantastic. But I'm just like, damn, she it really got to her. You know what I'm saying? I don't blame her. You know what I'm saying? Because like her biggest thing was like the people around us are the people we need to protect. Because she just said that prior to this, you feel me? And then the person who was leading them gets killed. And I feel like she grown to like connect with Myrn over that time. So it's just like, damn, this this is this is messed up. And then when she picks up the Myrn the butterfly, oh bro, bro that that, that. I said damn I, I was I was like I was like fuck I was like fuck now <laughs> now this is just right back to the right back to the boys right back to the boys and then of course after that some stuff with the judo master and everything happens. Uh, but we right back to the boys, and they're leaving off in the car, and like, hey man, how, did, how was they able to find you? Like they got tra- uh, they, they got uh, trackers in the helmets. <laughs> Vigilante just so happened to grab all the helmets, put them in the trunk, and so now they're tracking them with. The, now they're getting tracked. I'm not mad at Vigilante at all. Okay, I'm not mad at Vigilante at all for this scene because. How would how was Vigilante supposed to know that? Vigilante has no knowledge that they were tracking through like the helmets. As far as you know, he could, could have had a chip in hand. They could have had a chip in uh, Peacemaker or whatever. He had no idea. So it's like, okay. Also, these helmets are very, very vital because they're, you know what I'm saying, they all contain different type power sets. So like, we gonna need these because we still technically going to fight these fucking butterflies. No. But... Peacemaker tries to go throw him out. Vigilante has to take a piss. <laughs> the most the most inconvenient time to take a piss ever, okay? And Economist has to get Eagly back. Because Eagly, I kind of feel like Eagly just had like some sense. Okay, something's going wrong. Next thing you know, you see Peacemaker getting chased by a whole bunch of white supremacists. And then you have the fight that we've been waiting for. And it's not really a fight. It's... It's like a bashing of like Chris all together. He's being cr- like the 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 piece on his chest, the the, the dove piece is being crushed 
about his father and, and everything about him. And his father said, I should keep 40 years ago. I should I knew I should have killed you in this moment. Half. I should have killed you at this moment. I should have killed you at this moment. Half. He said they called him like called a faggot. He called him literally any and everything he wanted to call. I'm just like, and you feel for this guy because, granted, he always knew his dad was a piece of shit, but it's just like, damn. Are you constantly trying to get somebody's approval and they really, really, like, they legitimate, legitimately hate you, you know? So it's just like, damn, man. His character's already gone, they've been going through a lot. I think we've seen Peacemaker do some shitty shit. But, and we've seen the Suicide Squad. Um, but we only got a taste of what his character was. Now we see how much more complex this guy's life is. And granted, I don't, I still don't think he's a good person. Uh, He's made, he, he's done some terrible things. You know, I don't think we just completely forget about those things. But we get to, you get to understand him a lot more and just like how much trauma this guy has. And once again, like he, and he's about to be killed by his father into the goat. The goat. <laughs> Vigilante comes out. And I told y'all this was going to come back. I told, hey, all I'm saying, I'm pretty damn good at this. I am pretty damn good at this. I'm getting better at predicting shit, okay? There's gaps in the armor. And Vigilante takes advantage of that. Cuts, out, cuts the gap. Boom. The, the system's down. He can't use his, uh, the I guess, some kind of like blasters or whatever. Peacemaker get up, start whooping his ass. Now, my boy Vigilante roll over the, into the ground, surrounded by a bunch of... White, white supremacists and they get exactly what any white supremacist should get and bitch gets slaughtered <laughs> shout out to Economos has three saves this season and he is not going to let them forget that judo master the uh the gorilla and now the white supremacist Economos has deserved his. He gotta get a nickname now. Uh, we, it ain't gonna be Die Beard no more, bro. It's got. I don't, I, just say, I don't know, man. I don't know what they're gonna call him, but my boy, he deserves a nickname now because he he stepped when he need to, man. Once again, the chopper came automatic because boy, he laid them down. He laid them down, deservingly so. You know what I'm saying? They 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 deserve all that shit, but um. Peacemaker had is beating the shit out of his dad. And just like, oh, you hit like a girl. I'm just like, bro, kill this motherfucker. Now, me, I wanted uh, his his daddy to fucking explode and eaglet eat his fucking ass. Okay, that's what I would have liked to see happen. To explode and fucking eat the bitch. You feel me? But no, he just instead of talking to Peacemaker, just talking to I got you. Like, yeah, there's nothing you could do. Peacemaker shoots the bitch in the head. Proceeds to cry. Vigilante think he over there doing facial exercise. I said, what the fuck? <laughs> now, I, I kind of feel like that might be out of like place for some people, but I think given who Vigilante has shown us to be, I kind of feel like this kind of just like brought him. He just like, him. I don't really know how to handle other people showing like emotions. And especially because cause I think, I think it's kind of like a little bit out of context or, or just like, you know, implied that they had a different type of relationship before Peacemaker with the jail. I feel like they were just, like, killing people and shit, and, like, you just kind of, like, fuck it, you know what I'm saying? But, like, I think over time, I think that I think that Rick Flag death really, like, played a part in uh, Peacemaker's uh, life now, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, who he is as a person. So the crew gets back together. It's like, hey, we got to go. We got to take down these people. Um, that, That's just what it is. We have to go take down the cow. Uh, and we see the cow in this episode. I don't know. I feel like the cow might be held captive as well and just like being forced to produce that shit. I don't think the cow actually wants to do that. That's just my personal opinion. So as a part of me feel like the cow is going to be freed and they're going to set it. Um, they're going to use the the teleportation device to like set the cow free and send it back to his world or something like that, which might benefit them. Because I don't think the cow is actually a bad person. Um, or a bad alien. I think he's. Like, you know what I'm saying. I think he's captured, and the the butterfly just happened to be feasting off of it. I could be wrong about that, but we'll see next week. Um, now they they headed to 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 handle business. You feel me? But I, I think a moment before that, 
before that because we, there's still like a little bit left. Of course, we may go to the uh, the veterinarian and everything, uh, and and P- eagerly hugs peacemaker, and vigilante has guns pulled on <laughs> two nurses in a bit. <laughs> I just have to mention how good the comedy is with Vigilante. And it's the fact that he was ready to kill them, but didn't want to wrap them in tape because it'll mess up their skin when you take it off. I said, bro, I I don't understand this dude, but I love him. Like, I absolutely love him, bro. He's probably one of the funniest people I've ever seen on television just in general. But, yeah, like I said, they, they, they had not. And the crew together, they got hardcore to lead them. My girl out of bio, like, holds off on going back to be with her, her, her wife. I uh, hope that doesn't come back to bite in the ass. I really don't because I, I, I really want the best for out of bio, considering the fact that she just got thrust into, like, a really, really shitty situation. Um, and because she was manipulated by her mother and, well, taken advantage of by her mother because she had fell on hard times. And, like, I, Amanda Waller is a fucking menace, bro. Like, your daughter lost her job, and you just like, you know what, yeah, I, I can probably, you, you are, you're a real innocent person. Hey, come work with me, and like, like bro, I'm like, what the, like, that's fucked up, bro. That, that, that's fucked up. I don't care how you look at it, it's fucked up. Um, but yeah, they headed out to take on the cows. And next week, we got the big showdown. The, the, I don't even know what you call them. I don't even. Know. They have no. They have no official name. Uh, <laughs> but I'm. Just, I call them like a. They're like a band. They have the band versus the butterflies next week. Yeah, that's that's what it's gonna be. I, I can't wait to see it, bro. This show has. I've loved this. I've loved every second of this show. I think there was one episode that I didn't feel like was as good. Uh, I think that was a. Um, I want to say episode five. Yeah, I want to say episode five dipped a little bit for me, but for the mo- for the for the most part, this show has been phenomenal, man. And uh, I can't wait to see see how this thing wraps up because I'm I'm big. I love one thing. I'm really really big on is like endings. I'm big on characters and I'm big on endings. Okay, those are like the two most important things for me whenever I'm watching something. Uh and the character, I'm already hooked on the character. Literally every single character in here, to me, is interesting in one way or another. So, as long as they nail the ending next week, I'll be, I'm, I'm perfectly fine. I, I'm, this is, I don't know where I will rank this amongst superhero shows, but I know it's like really high, bro. Because this show has been wildly consistent. And I love the characters that I'm seeing. And, like, the stakes feel real. And, and you don't know what's going to happen each and every episode. So, I'm, I'm loving it. Uh, but you guys, let me know what y'all thought about it down in the comments, man. Hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you guys are safe. Catch up with you guys later. Peace.